Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Coco. I just wanted to come to you. I haven't been on YouTube in a while, um, or I haven't really talked to people just because there's just so much going on right now. Um, I am currently expecting I am 18 weeks and four days. Um, and I wanted to come out and talk to you about something called incompetence cervix. Um, I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, some women have it. They still don't know why some women get it, why some women don't. Um, but I happen to get it. And it's basically when your cervix is opening and it's not supposed to be opening. Of course, we know that because we're only supposed to open when the baby's supposed to be coming. Um, luckily, my baby is very lazy. He doesn't really move. And yes, it is a boy. I wanted to do a gender reveal, but all this stuff going on and all the procedures, um, I just skipped out on a gender reveal because I'm not really feeling it. Um... So basically, story time, um, I went to my ultrasound at 17 weeks. The lady decided to do a transactional ultrasound. She wasn't going to, but she said she will this time just because, by the grace of God, I think she, think, thankful, I'm thankful that she did do it. Um, they saw that my cervix was um, dilated or opening. And it's supposed to be about three or four or five centimeters, and mine was 1.5. So the doctor sent me to the high risk doctor right away. Uh, I'm not going to say any names, but basically, when I went to the high risk doctor the next day, because there was an urgent appointment, the high risk doctor basically told me there was nothing she could do and basically let me know when you have the baby at home. <laughs> so I was devastated. Um, and this is real true story, y'all. I went to Fred Myers when I left the hospital, when I left her office. I, I went home, I went to sleep. She per, she prescribed me some progesterone, vagina progesterone pills. It's basically like you insert in your vagina and you take the progesterone pills and it's supposed to strengthen your cervix. But she told me, I don't think it works. But you can take it anyways. So basically, the moral of what I'm trying to tell you is she didn't give a fizzna if <laughs> my baby died or not. Which was sad because you're supposed to be a high-risk doctor. You're supposed to be here to save the babies. And the scary part is you really don't care. And, and especially with all this stuff going on in the world about racism um, and how they're treating the black community. Um it's kind of scary, like, were you doing this on purpose? <laughs> was it, like, intentional? Or I don't know what was going on. But um, my mom called University of Washington. I am going to say their hospital because they came through. Um, the service was excellent. I got an excellent doctor. They wanted me to stay that night. Um, two days after I went to the other doctor, and they did a surgery surgery called the Sir Clodge surgery. It's basically when they're going and stitch the cervix together. Um, but yeah, sorry, I'm just all over the place. It's because it was so much going on. Before I went to the UW, University of Washington um, Maternal Infant Clinic, I seen a lady outside and she was just standing there. It was raining hella hard. And me and my cousin went to the pick up the progesterone pills from the pharmacy and it was raining really hard outside and she had a big duffel bag and it said hope and she just started walking into the rain she had a dress on flip-flops and an umbrella but it was just weird because it wasn't an appropriate rain weather outfit and I felt like she was an angel and her bag said hope and it made me think I need to be faithful in God I need to keep praying because it's not over. I need to have hope. I need to have faith. I need to have trust in the Lord so he can deliver this baby. Um, and that's exactly what he did. As soon as I seen her, they got me into UW. We seen an excellent doctor. She was amazing. I'm going to stay there at UW because I'm not leaving anywhere else. If you are in Seattle, Washington, go to University of Washington for your care. They are the best. Um, 
I wish I had her name, but um, I could pronounce it, but it was with a K, so Dr. K. But she was amazing. Um, she got me in the next day, stitched my cervix up. She said, luckily, we got in when we got in because she could see the water bag right there when she looked in there. Um, before I got my surgery, I had to get epidural. I hate epidural. <laughs> I don't think I ever get that again. That was horrible, but I was just doing everything for my baby. It's crazy because you go in with a plan and you get pregnant and say, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. And God has other plans for you um, because that's not what you're going to do because you're not in charge. And I always have to remember that I'm not in charge. God is in, in control always. And I'm so thankful that we saved my baby's life. And yes, I'm having a son. I'm so excited. Baby boy, he's going to come. I'm not going to say the name until he's here because this is a special name to me. Because I already knew I was going to have his son when I was in fifth grade. It's kind of strange. But <laughs> I already picked out his name in fifth grade. That's how powerful that is. So, um, yeah. But before, with all this going on, I had to get the cervical surgery. That is what it's called. Um, and nobody told me that there's so much complications that can happen when you get pregnant. It's a beautiful thing, but it's also a scary thing because, like, we are creating life. But, you know, that life can get taken at any moment, just like in reality. So we have to keep praying. We have to keep having faith in God. We have to keep trusting in Him that He will deliver and um, just have faith. I'm praying. I pray every night. Um, if I didn't pray, I don't know where we would be right now because as soon as you pray, as soon as you have faith, as soon as you have that trust, it like, it, everything just flows together. And I'm so thankful for that doctor. I'm so thankful for, um, everything that they did for me. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, that was my story. Um, right now I'm 18 weeks. If you have some complications as a woman, I know we really don't talk about complications as pregnancy, but it is a natural thing, you know? Um, and I want to know your complications. You, um, tag below, um, anything you went through. Um, also follow me on Instagram. <laughs> uh... I won't be posting pictures as much just because I've been going through so much. But your girl's birthday is coming up, so I will be getting <laughs> good for that. Um, but just to talk about the baby a little bit more, the baby is big as a grapefruit. So that's kind of big. It's like that big. I do feel little flutters of kicks, not like strong kicks, but little flutters of kicks. It's so funny because I know like his sleeping schedule already inside the stomach. I don't know if that sounds weird or not. But I know his sleeping schedule. He wakes me up in the middle of the night. Um, every night. <laughs> I think this is about to be a big baby. But we'll see. Everybody says that. But I knew it was a boy. But his dad is really huge. My dad is really huge. My dad's dad is really huge. My baby's dad's dad is really huge. So he might be a huge one. But I'm just, I just want him to, you know, keep baking. Keep resting. I'm going to probably keep it low key uh, just so I'm resting and I'm doing good. kind of gets boring sometimes, but I got to do whatever I got to do. Um, yeah, so comment below any, you know, problems that you had or any complications that you had and amazing stories that you had. Um, and just keep the faith. Keep trusting in God. Like I said, I pray every night. I wake up in the morning and I pray. I wait for him to kick in the morning time just so I can see what's going on. Um, I sometimes play with him, like just rubbing on my stomach to see if he's awake or if he feels me. And also, if I don't feel him right away, I always um, drink some like cold water with super ice, really, really cold water. And then that's when I really would start feeling him. Or sometime I'll drink some tea and I'll start feeling him. Um, but yeah, I'm excited, team boy. Um, and I'm just counting the weeks, but I also don't want to rush anything because I just want him to take his time. 
you know, stay in there as long as possible. I'll keep you updated every week um, because this is a journey that I feel like I'm taking alone. Even though I have my family and my boyfriend to support me, it's still a journey that um, I feel like I want to talk about because it is scary and it's just good to get it off your chest. Um, so I will stand up now and show you my baby bump. So this is 18 weeks. Big as a grapefruit. He is kind of big already for 18 weeks, but <laughs> I can't wait till he get here. He's going to be a king. Quote me on this when I tell you. But yeah, that's it. Um, I'll talk to you guys next week and I'll keep you updated. Next week, I'll probably talk a little bit more about symptoms um, and some other stuff that's going on. But, all right.